Hey guys, welcome. This is HD, and welcome to game three between I am Bomber, or not I am Bomber, I am Lucira and Startail Bomber. Uh, gosh, that would be such a huge development in the community if Bomber and Lucira were to, were to switch sides for whatever reason. Which which is actually really cool to, to talk about right now because there's so many switches that happen in StarCraft 2 between players and teams. Um, I'm sure everybody remembers the huge Korean... Um, and uh, North American interplay between teams and communities, not even North American, but Korean and foreign interplay, as a lot of foreign teams were picking up Korean players, and then a lot of switching and things happening, Cole MVP, and um, and uh, of course Quantic IM, Quantic IM now split apart. Uh, players are constantly making moves, but uh, yeah, anyways, uh, this is time now, guys, for game three between Startail Bomber and between Lucira. And uh, this has been a great series so far. I, I've been really, really excited to bring you guys this. Once again, this is for the IPL4 um, qualifier. And uh, if you guys get a shot, go ahead and get your tickets for Vegas. And of course, for IPL4, you guys can get your uh, information and tickets online at the links down below this video. And uh, if you guys ever have a difficulty finding it, it's pretty easy to use Google. Obviously, you guys can also go to IGN.com and get more information there as well. But uh, yes, uh, IPL4 is going to be one of the biggest StarCraft 2 events of the year. There's also going to be League of Legends there as well, for those of you guys who play League of Legends. So if you guys don't, you know, you don't really play that much StarCraft 2, or maybe you guys need that extra push over the hump to go out to IPL4 and you guys play LoL, then, you know, come out because we do have LoL there as well. And uh, it's going to be a huge event. It's going to be great. I'm going to be casting there live. I'm so excited. You guys can even come out there and steal my money at the poker tables. I'm, I'm that bad at poker. So if you guys want to come out there and make fun of an Asian man sitting at the poker tables trying to win money, then come out and uh, meet me there. Uh... It'll be really, really cool. I, I'm really, very, very, very excited for IPL4. And so um, for this entire week up until April 6th, I think I'll be focusing on bringing you guys special premier IPL matches just to build up a little bit more hype for the event. Uh, once again, I, I am a little disappointed that we didn't get first place, but we made a great push, man. It was such a run. I thought for sure we were going to get up there, but then the poll had to close. Um, I actually didn't know that the poll was, was only going to be open for two or three days. I was under the impression it would be open until April 6th, but unfortunately it was closed off. So um, a bit unfortunate, but we did make a great run. We went up from fourth place to second place in like in like 24 hours I think and we got like 8,000 votes from where we were sitting before which was only like 800 votes um, getting very very close to first place when and we were only about I think 500 votes away or a thousand votes away from taking first so uh, it was a good run guys but you know my hats off to Total Biscuit and D Apollo they're a great casting crew and uh, it's gonna be a pleasure to watch them cast live along with the rest of the other casters Wolf Cowdor, Cats Pajamas and Doa uh, it's gonna be a great great event hope you guys all enjoy and uh, that's about it, I guess. It's uh, it's time for game three. We have a Barracks Factory Starport opening from Startail Bomber. So this is not an opening that you see uh, that commonly anymore in TBZ. Obviously, it's still something that Terran players do all the time. But when I say not used that commonly, usually most Terrans against Zergs, they open up with the Barracks Factory uh, Hellion Squadron. Uh, and they go into an expansion after that. So this is pretty interesting. And um, we'll see what Bomber decides to do. Obviously, most likely going to have that Banshee coming out here. But, um, you know, I talked to Pain User a lot about this, being that I'm a Zerg player and Pain User is a Terran player. And he, he, he doesn't like the Cloak Banshee. Oh, wow, we are going to have Cloak as well. He doesn't like having the Banshee opening against Zerg because he feels like, and I actually kind of agree with him here, it is a bit gimmicky because a lot of times Zerg players obviously are going to have Queens already. So if your Banshee doesn't do damage, it's pretty much a, uh, a shot in the dark, and it's pretty much wasted resources. So it's 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 somewhat gimmicky. Um, there is cloak coming on the way as well. So really, this is a huge investment of resources from Bomber. And if Bomber does not do a lot of damage with this cloak and the Banshee, then he is going to be um, uh, finding himself very very far behind in this game. Ra if, rather than if he had opened up with a uh, with a Hellion opening with the barracks and the factory into the command center. So this is going to be pretty intriguing. And we'll see how effective this is going to be. Meanwhile, oh, the Zergling will be allowed inside. Oh, wow. That Zergling might have just barely caught the glimpse of that Banshee. We'll see. Keep your eyes on that production tab. And I don't think he did. Because if, if, oh, there it goes. There it goes. So the Zergling did see the Banshee at the end. So now we should see some evolution chambers coming up. And we should see a mash, a mad dash, if you will, into Queens. Um... Uh, 
And he does have three queens up right now, so he does have decent anti-air defense, but he doesn't have any type of detection for the cloak. And now the cloak comes down. So uh, hopefully, uh, Lucero gets a spore crawler up right now, and he's going to get one inside the main. But how much damage will that banshee be able to do before the uh, the uh, detection comes up? And so far, five drones have gone down this game already, and six, seven, eight, nine drones have gone down already for. Uh, for Lucira, and Lucira is in a world of hurt, ladies and gentlemen. Anytime you break that 10 drone count, I think that's where the Banshee has paid for itself um, with Cloak. And any additional drones that go down, that's just adding extra fuel for the fire. And so 14 drones total, I think that this uh, little gimmicky play, as Pain User would call it, has been a success. And uh, now we have a third Command Sword coming up. So uh, Bomber just feeling very, very confident in his play. Uh, to, to pick off 14 SCVs or 14 drones, go for the command center as well. He does not fear the counterattack. He's going to go into the macro game and uh, really, really setting himself up for a great game against Lucira. And it all came down to not scouting the main, really. So that's a bit unfortunate from, from I Am Lucira. And now we have a Hellion squadron coming in and it's Blue Flame upgraded as well. Oh my god! <laughs> so uh, <laughs> Bomber here coming in here with Blue Flame. Hellion's going to add more drones here burning them up and he's gonna kill off a total now of 19 workers those hellions are still alive bomber is doing a fantastic job of just throwing a wrench into the machinery for lucira lucira trying to get the drones up trying to get up as many bases as possible and 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 this game bomber just picked out the play style that he knew would annoy the zerg the most and if with a little bit of luck on his side would be able to win him the game and right now i think he is on the precipice he's poised to potentially take a victory here against Osira he has done so much damage this game already now the really only thing that bomber has to worry about is some type of a counter attack here from Lucira but you know this time he's walled off the front door and that is looking increasingly unlikely that some type of counter play is going to be able to shut him down like we've seen in game one and two where the Zerglings just surrounded the barracks and factories and really took apart and dismantled almost every single building crucial to the Terran production lines I don't think we're gonna see it this game Lucira really the one being on the defensive and uh, bomber just looking incredibly talented so far uh, uh, playing a, a, a spectacular game really the changeling coming out here from Lucira uh, he's got to get some type of scout in the base uh, it's kind of hard to get a changeling in there but uh, we'll see if that pulls off or not as it's making its way across the field meanwhile that banshee that did so much damage in the beginning just kind of sitting idly by afk for now but eventually that banshee pilot you know he comes back to his computer or his, his, his controls and he decides to fly back in there and we'll probably see that in the heat of battle when you know the zerg is most preoccupied in the middle of the map meanwhile those blue flame hellions uh they're coming in oh my god there are blue flame hellions coming in from bomber bomber is just really uh, coming in once again is gonna kill off more drones and uh, 30 workers killed off so far this game so uh, This map calm before the storm really offering a, a great spot If you spawn like this with both sides on the top position and I would assume pretty similar both sides on the bottom position uh, A great landing zone for medevacs to come in there and just harass the zerg economy all day long uh, If you look at it, you can get dropped here at the zerg third You can then be proceeded to be dropped into the zerg main and and things just look very very difficult for uh, for, for zerg to deal with those blue flame hellion drops, so uh, a good Decision here for bomber to take to the skies go with the cloak banshees I think and, and then go for the medevac drops of blue flame hellion say things have really made sense so far uh, as the game has unfolded and if we look at the economy tab uh, my hats off to Lucira for being able to stay on top 74 workers over 61 that is really 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 amazing considering that he's lost 35 workers this game already that that is uh, fantastic for him but of course because he's done that he has taken a huge hit to his army supply 102 under 123 and uh, looks like that cloak banshee has come back to the computer and uh, might be able to fly in there and do some work there is another Medevac full of four blue flame equipped Hellions and this time it might be accompanied by the uh, Banshee as well So uh, this could look to do some serious damage into the Zerg economy And there's only one spore crawler th there as well And where is Lucira going to go with it? Where is Bomber gonna go with this? It looks like he is going to drop inside 
the the natural and he's gonna get a couple of shots off on those drones the Zerglings immediately trying to surround, but the drones are all stacked up, and oh my god, Lucira coming back to the stack just a little too quickly, and that was a huge blunder by Lucira. When you pull your drones away from Hellions, especially ones of the blue flame variety, you pull them away and you keep them away. You don't send them back right away um, when the Hellions are still there, and that was a mistake by Lucira, and that worker count just went up to 48. 48 workers killed this game. Not even giving Lucira a chance to build army units. Uh, this entire this entire game so far, this third game of I the IPL4 qualifier, Lucira has just been struggling to get drones on the field and has not been been given an opportunity to really morph his larva into what he really needs, which is the uh, the army units. And now, what is he gonna do to face off against the Thors and tanks and Hellions? Bomber has transitioned beautifully from the Starport build into Mass Mech, and he's gone into tanks, Thors, and Hellions, and and I just don't know. Three Thors at a time being constructed right now from uh, from Bomber. So Bomber's economy, Bomber's production facilities, everything is running at 100% efficiency, max capacity here, and being able to produce three Thors at a time is a scary, scary thing. That is, uh, that is not something you want to face off against. And now the Thor is beginning to march out. The creep tumors here, as, as, as plentiful as they may be, are going to be picked off here pretty quickly. And there you guys can hear the cries of the creep tumors as the Hellion fire uh, flamethrowers launch out and just destroy them all. And uh, now what is Lucira going to do? He does have quite the Muta squadron. I don't know how he got so many mutas out, so finally able to convert his production away from drones and into mutalisks, and this is what you need to do against mass mech. Either you go mass mutas or you go mass roaches, and, um, you know, there, I don't think there's that many Thors on the field here, and because there's no backup marines as well, I actually think with good enough micro, Lucira could pick off all these Thors, and it is going to come down to the upgrades as well, and oh, those Thors have one, two, two upgrades, that's a lot of upgrades for the Thors, and the mutas, oh, only one armor, so not enough upgrades for the mutas. And uh, I really think that's going to play beautifully for Bomber, who's got his attack luring out right now, pulling and luring and baiting the Zerglings and Banelings away from home into the range of the siege tanks. And now here comes those mutas. Lucira trying to do the counterattack, but was unsuccessful. Now has to come back home. Going to try to pick off the Thors one at a time. Has to be careful here not to let those mutas clump up. But I think those two weapon Thors are just way too powerful and difficult for Lucira to deal with. Um, especially that armor upgrade too, really coming in handy because Mutalisks depend a lot on not having to deal with armor. When those Blade Worms shoot out, they bounce around and stuff. And uh, when there's armor, that really, really makes it difficult for the Mutas to uh, get maximum damage dealt. And so, uh, difficult situation here for Lucira. You may have to pull those Mutas back one more time, but... Uh, um, yeah, the Bomber right now looking to take this game. Banelings crashing into tanks. Never a good situation. Lucira now trying to pick off the Thors. Does he have enough of a mass of mutas to do it? He has to pull drones off the line, even bringing overlords to try to distract the Thors, and it is going to be successful. The overlords serving as Destiny would call it, the retard magnet and has been able to pull the Thor's attention away, allowing uh, Lucira with that last find of Mutalist to pick off another Thor, but now two more Thors joining the fray. And uh, with that, I think Lucira's nail might, the proverbial nail might be getting put in the coffin now. And I'm not too sure how, um, I'm not too sure how Bomber would lose this one. I think Bomber is poised to go on in the qualifier number one or I believe this is qualifier number two, but I believe he is poised to win now against Lucira, and what a fantastic set of games this was, extremely high profile. Here comes the Zerglings and Banelings here, last desperate cry from Lucira, but uh, unfortunately for him, gets destroyed as he runs down the ramp, and now the Baneling Nest has been dis uh, destroyed as well. And uh, yeah, we're just moments away, I think, from Lucira typing out that GG, and there it is. So, Bomber takes game three, after uh, after winning game one and then losing game two, takes game three pretty uh, pretty convincingly, I would say. And um, uh, what a fantastic set of games this was. Once again, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys get a chance, please do subscribe. I'm located on YouTube. My home is at youtube.com slash HD StarCraft. And you guys can find more awesome StarCraft 2 videos there. 
Uh, you guys can also follow me on Twitter and Facebook at HD Starcraft as well. And uh, throughout this week, up until April 6th, I think I'm going to be focused on bringing you guys more IPL4 content because I want to really build up the hype for IPL4. And uh, as a last announcement, please do uh, get your tickets and come out or at the very least tune into IPL4. That will be going on on April 6th and I will be there casting live. Hope you guys enjoyed and this is HD Starcraft signing out.